Hey everybody, it's your Alex Bigley, and uh, <clears throat> welcome back to the channel. I hate driving in South Florida. I do apologize about the uh, the camera situation. I, I know I've done this, the last video I did. Um, I the only time I have the free time I have to make this video. <laughs> Let's try to readjust that there so we can actually see me. Uh, <clears throat> So, we're going to talk about the most wonderful thing in the world, yet again, politics. Uh, so, let me open by asking this one question. What do politicians, every, let's say most, if not all, politicians have in common? And it's not what you think, although you're probably right. Lie, cheat, steal, you know, whatever. Uh, but the one thing that they have in common is that they're all politicians. Okay. My camera, I do apologize. That's going to be, I think, smegging. <laughs> I hate having to do this one driving. I can't stand it there. Is that better? Okay, good. You can see my arm. Yay, Yay fat arm. Um, sorry, anyway. <laughs> So they're all politicians. The problem with that is that's their main focus, politics. Their main focus is the lobbyists, the, you know, getting political clout. Uh, they're not, cons they're more concerned with politics than they are about the country that they're supposed to be helping run. Because they're they're re they're they're citizens of the land of politics, not citizens of America. At least in how they act. So, what's the solution? Well, so unfortunately, the solution lies in the people you do not get to see in presidential debates and other debates. The people who don't get the, who can't afford the cover charge to get into the debates. The answer lies in electing Americans and not politicians. What is an American? An American, the difference between an American and a politician. A politician will look at the Constitution and go, hmm, we, we, we can do better. We can do better than that. An American looks at the Constitution and says, this is the instruction book on running this country. Understanding how, why, how and why it was written and the intention behind it. And not looking for faults to correct. <clears throat> I'm reminded of a story and I don't know the validity of it. But uh, it's it's a good analogy, nonetheless. Uh, apparently, there was like some kind of ruler, king, whatever, who had new people come in under his court that were rulers underneath him. And before talking to him or anything, sat them all down to have dinner. Those who added salt to their soup before even tasting it. He fired immediately. The thought process behind that was is that they were, they were, they had a mentality of making change with no prior knowledge of what they were changing. That's a very apt description of a lot of politicians, unfortunately, because they're more concerned about politics than they are about serving the American people. So, if if I were a rich man, dubba 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 dubba, uh, and was able to run, I would have, and this, this, this would be actual, here's something, here's something novel, uh, campaign promises that you actually do. Day one. Day one, uh, 
what is it? What do you want to call it? Uh, executive orders, right? I made a list. I have to I have it here, uh, just for his aid to memory. Oh yeah, uh, senators and Congress. Um, term limits. Nobody's allowed to be grandfathered in. As soon as that act goes in, and there's another. Uh, election for your position, you're done. Simple as that. Uh, and I would even put in there a clause uh, stating that if you have run for two terms, unlike unlike uh, the presidential uh, term limit where you can run two terms and then skip an election and then come back if you wanted to, theoretically. Two terms, you're done. Period. No, uh, no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So, the, um, so there's that. Oh, yes. One of my favorite ones I've come up with. What I call the Kosher Bill Act. What does that mean? Well, I highly suggest that you look up the term. Thank you. I wasn't talking. Um, look at me. I got a big motor and overcompensating. Um, anyway, the Kosher Bill Act. There is something that they do when it comes to writing bills that they try to get passed. That's called adding pork. And what does that mean? Well, essentially it means that for whatever stupid reason, they put like the main thing of the bill as something hugely important. And then attached to said bill are things of lesser importance, but are one, 100% unrelated to Things that like to chip away at the structure of this country most of the time. The Kosher Bill Act will make it to where you have one subject per bill, period. You are not allowed to add pork to it, as it were. Um, yeah. The other thing, flat tax rate. Everybody and their grandma says this, but nobody has the uh, intestinal fortitude to actually do it. I don't know why. See, here's the thing. And, and you know what? I will dare say everybody, everybody needs to pay their fair share. Absolutely. Um, there are people in this country who are overpaid and have more money than they need. And those people, again, are called politicians, but, you know. Um, the flat rate tax. Here's the thing. You, you know, people are like, oh, well, rich people need to pay more money. Well, let's say someone has $100. Say the tax is 10, 10%. That's 10 bucks, right? Someone has $1,000. 10% of that is $100. So the person who has more money will be taxed more. This is called math. And I know that nowadays, for some strange reason, uh, math and, you know, figuring things out and, 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 you know, rational thinking is all somehow apparently marks of white supremacy. So I, I don't know. Uh, do with that information what you will. Um, let me see. Ooh, yeah, here's the other one. Cut all, all representatives, politicians, if you, if you are working for the government in an office position, in a, in, in, an issue, in a position of power and control and authority, your pay will be cut in half. 
there is you you want to save money and you want to have money for these different programs and everything else like that well sacrifices need to be made and those sacrifices could easily you skim the fat off the top and i'm talking about from the president all the way down okay through the cabinet through you know senate through house of representatives everything the whole lot okay irs whatever the whole the whole smegging lot um okay and here's the big one and this will this will help the economy this will help stabilize the economy and you know what may even help when it comes to the national debt and that is to bring back the gold standard. What does that mean? Well, Fort Knox used to have meaning behind it, <clears throat> other than just a cliche uh, analogy for something tough to get into. Fort Knox is, is the big gold repository for the for the country. It's supposed to be, you know, what our money's based on. For whatever reason, we decided to base our money on literally nothing and are shocked as a result that our money subsequently becomes worth nothing. So bringing it back to gold standard, obviously, will uh, we'll take care of that. You are basing your money on something tangible. It's, it's, it's like, you, you're right now with Overprinting money and inflation, you might as well be giving everybody an NFT because it's it's just it's there's no guarantee for one that inflation will go down. You, inflation never goes down, and at the rate that they're cranking out cash, it's there's there's no recovery on the horizon. I, I don't see it happening. Your milk will be five dollars a gallon before the end of the year, 2022. Um, it's going to be ridiculous, and then you know, and then, and then the politicians are going to have to raise the minimum wage up to fifteen dollars an hour. Uh, so, you know, so they, at least they're covered that way. They covered their behind in, in, in the fact that the fifteen dollar an hour raise won't cause inflation. I mean, because you can't have $15 an hour minimum wage cause inflation if inflation causes $15 an hour minimum wage. So, uh, so these are the things that I would do day one. These are executive orders that I would do if I was a rich man and I was able to get into the debates. And these are, these are not uh, empty campaign promises that I would make. But, you know, these are legitimate things that I would do. So, um, <clears throat> aside from that, like I said, just, you know, <laughs> vote American, uh, don't vote for, 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 politicians because politicians always have ulterior motives. And most of the time it's never in the interest of the American people, sadly. So, and, and, and it, and it, forgive my phrasing, but it pisses me off. Because you're supposed to be upholding the Constitution of the United States of America and serving the people, not the other way around. You're not supposed to have all these things bend and, and, and fold and origami itself to serve you and your interests. And sometimes things have to be done for the, for the betterment of all. I was going to say the greater good, but that lost its meaning uh, thank you hot fuzz <laughs> so and, and here's the thing much like a parent with a child or at least the way it should be you know sometimes you have to deny certain things because in the long run things will be better because of it uh, you know you have to you have to have structure otherwise if you if there's no structure and there's free reign on everything then then everything falls apart 
which is what we're seeing now, unfortunately. And I don't care what side of the aisle you're on. There are certain things that are immutable facts. Immutable fact is that the government of this country was made to serve the people, not the other way around. The constitution of this country was made to limit the government, not the people. And that's the way it's supposed to be. But we have politicians in, in office that are constantly trying to do the opposite of what the way this country is meant to be run. And that's why you need to that's why you need Americans in office and not politicians. I've rambled on long enough. If you uh, happen to agree with me, let me know. Give a like. If you happen to disagree with me, please conduct yourself as a you know rational adult. Do not result to uh, you know childish name calling in the comments and what have you. Uh, if you have an opposing viewpoint, state opposing viewpoint rationally and calmly. Uh, that's all I ask. I'm doing the same thing on my end. I'm trying to be rational and calm about it. Um, and I'm not doing any personal attacks. I might have made comments a little bit here and there, but I'm not personally attacking you. Okay? So, <clears throat> with that said, thanks for, for very much for watching, and I do promise I will be uh, uploading the, the video that will shut me down uh, and, and alienate me on with with the very few people who I do have watching me more than likely um, soon I know I promised that in the last video but uh, I will get around to doing that shortly so thank you very much for watching bye